guys and welcome to the broken crystal for this video I'm going to be talking about the nine different moon phases that people who practice Wicca or are very spiritual would follow these nine phases are different than the eight phases that science recognizes and in my last video I did a get to know of the Queen of Moon Oracle deck that entire deck is based around the moon phases and that's actually where this picture comes from it's the back of the card and it's a pretty perfect example of what a full moon phase would look like so these papers come from my book of shadows and I don't mind sharing these because it's pretty general information there's nothing personal or anything like that in there so this is the first page that I have on the moon phases and it's just kind of overall information. I have that there's nine phases of the moon and I have all nine phases in, on the next few pages. The moon's energy is feminine and receptive and the sun's energy is masculine and projective. That makes the moon the goddess and the sun the god. The moon's energy is very magnetic which is why the ocean tides change throughout the month. It goes along with the moon phase. The moon also helps with your intuition, your sixth sense, um, working with magic, doing divination, spells, rituals, all that stuff. And it's not just a saying that when the full moon is coming, people act weird and crazy. There is no scientific evidence around it, but there's your own proof. Anytime the full moon is coming, you know because people start acting really crazy, they start driving crazy, they get really moody. Some people can get affected, like they get headaches, they might get really sleepy, maybe they can't sleep at all. So it, the moon affects everyone in many ways. As the moon grows, so it starts off as the new moon, which is barely any light, and as the light grows and it starts to get more illuminated, you do magic for increasing and attracting. As the moon wanes, so after the full moon and it's going into the dark moon, you're doing magic for decreasing, getting rid of, banishing, things like that. I started my phases with the new moon. Some people may start it with the dark moon um, I can explain it more as I get to the dark moon. Really the only difference between the moon phases um, regarding spirituality and science is for people who are very spiritual, practice Wicca, all that, they recognize the dark moon. Um, the dark moon I have at the very end of the list. Some people may consider it the very, very first phase. It is the day right before the new moon and I, I will talk about it a little bit more but I did put a little bit of information right there just for myself but I will go over it and um, a lot of people will use dark moon and new moon interchangeably and they consider it the same thing um, these two different phases are very very important in spirituality and Wicca they can mean very different things and the dark moon is a lot more powerful than the new moon and you want to be very careful when doing magic around this time. Um, the dark moon is when there's absolutely no light. You probably won't even see the moon in the sky and the new moon is not recognized on any calendars unless you get a special spiritual one but when you see the new moon on a calendar just know that the day before the new moon that is the dark moon. The new moon is the next day and it starts when there is just a little sliver of light coming through. The new moon is the very beginning of the lunar cycle. When I was doing research on the moon phases, I came across a comparison to planting a seed. So that is why I have that right there. It helped me a lot when thinking about the moon phases so the new moon is when you just plant seeds into the dirt. It's good for new beginnings, change, starting new projects, new journeys. 
attracting new love to you, attracting a new job, maybe a new home, new friendship. And this is the perfect time to set your goals and intentions for the upcoming cycle because once the full moon comes, that's when you're really going to put everything into motion. So during the new moon, you're gonna start creating energy and thoughts and manifestation and power into what you want for this upcoming cycle. When doing magic, it should be focused around new things like I mentioned before. And the magic should also be focused on attracting things that you want and increasing things that you want. So maybe increasing positive energy, increasing love, increasing patience, things like that. And then this last line is pretty much just everything I just said. So it says to do rituals for attracting things, love, abundance, money, health, job opportunities, new home, etc. The second phase is waxing crescent moon. And I have a picture, so that's when there's a little bit more light. It's not a sliver and it's not a half a moon. In this phase would be sprouting growth of the seed. So you might see a little bit of green coming up through the dirt. And another thing that I had read while researching the moon was somebody had mentioned wax on because they were confusing waxing and waning. So that's how I also think of it now. So wax on is the first few phases. Waning is the last few phases. So for the waxing crescent moon, illumination is growing, more light is coming through. This creates strength and intensity in building and looking forward to moving energy. This is a time to push forward with your goals and intentions. So in the new moon, you thought about them, you created them, you may have wrote them down. During the waxing, you're really going to start pushing those forward. You're going to really start thinking about them, manifesting them, really put them into your mind and bringing them to fruition. The magic that you would do around this time would be, again, to attract, to increase, strengthen, gain. It's good for relationships, physical health, well-being. Um, definitely magic on yourself, self-improvement, better positive energy, thoughts, emotions, attitude, patience, understanding, anything positive that you could think of that you would want, those would be the things that you would ask to come to you. After the waxing, crescent moon is the first quarter. So this is when the moon is a half. And it's a half on the right side. Because if we look at this, it does go in a clockwise motion. So we're right here at the moment. During the first quarter, the seed is starting to make roots and growth of the plant structure. During this time, you're going to keep pushing forward with all those goals and intentions that you've been creating and thinking about and manifesting. Again, the magic would be attracting, drawing things towards you, success. This is also a time for strength, determination, focus, reevaluation, decision making, commitment. Because now you've created all these goals and intentions, this is the time to reevaluate them if maybe you have thought of something different, maybe you want to word it differently so you're attracting the right thing. Maybe you've thought about it and you want to add more, maybe take away. But by this time, you should be committing to the goals that you're setting. The next phase is waxing gibbous moon. The buds are preparing to bloom on that seed we planted during the new moon. Again, during this phase, you're going to be thinking about those goals and intentions and still making revisions if needed because the full moon is the next phase. You can see right there. And we want all the goals and intentions to be perfect for the full moon. So this is your last chance to figure everything out 
that you want to set during the full moon. The best time to start your full moon preparations is a few days before the full moon actually happens. You can really start manifesting and thinking and dreaming and just making all of these goals and intentions and thoughts into reality. So when the full moon comes, you've used all your energy, all your power, all your might to make these things come true. They're no longer dreams. You're making them into a reality. Once the full moon is here, this is when that seed is in full bloom. The, the flowers are opened. If it's vegetables, it's ready to be picked. You know, it's, it's at its peak. This is when the moon is the strongest for attracting, for increasing. This is when you're going to seal all those goals and intentions. You're going to start seeing the fruits of your labor. Your psychic abilities are definitely heightened during this time. Like I was saying in the beginning, people can be really affected. They can get headaches, maybe have trouble sleeping. But this is also when you might have more paranormal activities. Maybe you're getting more messages from your guides. Maybe you're seeing more signs than usual. This is a great time to do magic involving prophecy, protection, divination, healing, abundance, money. Um, this is a good time to cleanse maybe crystals or tarot cards, oracle cards, maybe any items that you might have that you need a cleansing of. The moon's energy is very powerful and you should take that time to cleanse anything that you might have that you just don't feel has gotten a good cleansing from sage or maybe from some specific crystals like carnelian or selenite, things like that. You can also charge water and get moon water. You can charge some jewelry if you have any. This is also a really good time for fertility, transformation, completion, because we're completing those goals. Abundance, harvest, manifestation, achievement, and protection. The waning phases starts right after the full moon. That's when the moon is now getting smaller again. And the illumination is getting slimmer and slimmer. So now the moon will be going into the darkness. This is a time when you're going to start repelling instead of attracting. You can start setting goals or intentions, manifestation, whatever the case may be of bad habits, stresses, negative thinking, negative thoughts, negative energy, negative situations, negative people. Um, this is a good time to banish if you have any entities around you that you need to banish or maybe even people. As the moon gets darker and darker, the power to banish and repel just gets stronger. So you can definitely start during the waning gibbous moon, but you want to continuously work on it until you get to just before the dark moon. Because now you're kind of going backwards. So at the new moon, you worked on it up until the full moon when the moon was the most powerful and that is when you put everything into motion. Now we're kind of going backwards. So the waning gibbous is when you're going to start getting rid of everything and by the time we get to the dark moon when it's again very, very powerful, that is when you're going to put all the repelling into motion and you're going to get rid of all the negativity that you don't want anymore. So by the third quarter, those seeds that we planted at the new moon have been harvested. We've reaped the benefits of our fruits, of our flowers, of our vegetables, whatever the case may be. So now the plant is dying off until the next season or the next phase. And to compare the seeds, this is the time that you should start seeing all the benefits from all the work that you did before the full moon and then right at the full moon. This is the time where you're going to start seeing everything be put into motion, positive. And while all the positive things are happening from all the work that you just did, you're going to continue cleaning out 
all the bad, all the negative, all the bad habits, negative thoughts, energies, whatever the case may be, you're going to continue to keep attracting all that positivity in that you asked for and you're going to get rid of all the bad. This is a good time to start dealing with any obstacles or maybe roadblocks that you might be dealing with. And like I said, as the moon gets darker, getting rid of just gets even stronger. So if you are dealing with obstacles, negativity, you should be able to deal with that in the upcoming days. While you're getting rid of all the negativity, accepting all the positivity, this is a very good time to start thinking about the new lunar phase and the new goals and intentions that you want to create for the following month pretty much. The waning crescent moon is the last phase before the dark moon. This is your last chance to get together all of your negativity that you want out. And this is probably the last point where you want to really do magic or rituals or manifestation, anything like that. The dark moon, which I'll talk about, is very powerful and and you should be very, very cautious doing magic around that time. A lot of people actually recommend not doing anything during the dark moon. So if you have anything left that you want to take care of negativity-wise, take care of it during the waning crescent moon. This is a time to put things to an end, not just finish them, but put them to an end. You're surrendering and you're letting go. This is also a good time to really start thinking about the new cycle. At this point, you're just days away from the new cycle and you're gonna have to start setting new goals and intentions. The last phase is the dark moon. And I'm not sure if you can see in my picture, you can see that there is a moon there, but there's no light coming from it, like the other ones. You know, the other ones have little slivers, even this, the new moon. There's a tiny little sliver of light coming through. This has none. You can see the outline, but there's absolutely no light. And like I was just saying, during the dark moon, take extreme caution if you are not if you are not experienced in working with the dark moon's energy i would advise not to this is one of the most common times that someone would place a curse because of how powerful the dark moon is the dark moon's energy can be very destructive to magic in releasing karmic patterns um, if you are going to do magic around this time, it can be a good time to continue banishing those negative entity entities. And, and when you're banishing things at this point, it's not just a little annoyance. Somebody who is bothering you. This would be the time that you are banishing really bad entities maybe that are around you or haunting you, following you, um, people who are stalking you to the point where you are actually scared, not just an annoying ex. Um, this would be a good time to banish addictions and diseases like cancer. So this energy is very powerful and not an energy to mess around with. If you aren't doing magic, but you want to kind of benefit from this moon's energy, this would be a good time for justice to be brought to situations. Kind of just let karma take care of that. You will start to see justice being brought to situations on their own in this phase. You don't have to do much. Along with the self-reflection part, you can start dealing with your anger and passions. It might be more known during this time. It's a good time to do prophecy work as well. And again, this is a good time to bring closure to things. And after the dark moon starts the new phase over, the new moon. And that's kind of why I think that the dark moon should be the very last phase. The new moon starts the new phase with light. And when working towards the full moon, 
it's all positivity and increasing and illuminating. But after that full moon and you're going into the dark moon, you're losing light, it's getting darker, the magic starts getting darker, you are taking this time to get rid of negative things. So I feel like the dark moon is the perfect place to end. And it's also the complete opposite of the full moon because the full moon is the most powerful for the positive and the dark moon is the most powerful for the negative. I hope you guys liked this video. I hope that it was informational and you learned something from it. Definitely check back for new videos. I post once a week and I'll see you in the next video.